We're sitting in a swing at White Oak State Park, and this is the view from the swing. There's a trail down there. There's another, another bench down there. This quiet state park is situated on White Oak Lake, a popular fishing lake. Watchful wildlife and birding opportunities also abound here. Park facilities include 45 campsites, four Class A, 37 Class B, and four tent sites. A newly renovated private bathhouse, visitor center with exhibits, store with fishing supplies, marina with boat rentals, launch ramp, pavilion, picnic sites, and playground. Hiking trails and a mountain bike trail lead through marshlands and up to tree-lined ridges. Bicycles can be rented at the visitor center. In the summer, enjoy interpretive programs. Poison Spring Battleground State Park is just eight miles away. Its interpretive display is located in the White Oak Visitor Center. 0.6 miles from White Oak Lake State Park is the Poison Springs WMA. As soon as you turn off the main road into the WMA area, there will be a shooting range. In 1957, the Forestry Division purchased approximately 19,400 acres of abandoned farmland from the United States Department of Agriculture. Today, Poison Springs State Forest includes 24,090 acres in the western Washita and eastern Nevada counties. Poison Springs State Forest got its name from a nearby spring of the same name and is the site of a significant Civil War battle. The Battle of Poison Springs in April 19, 1864 was a convincing victory for the Confederates, forcing the retreat of Union forces north. The force proved to be an asset to the Confederates and trouble for the Union soldiers who had difficulty maneuvering through the thick pine stands. The Forestry Division manages the force for multiple uses. The Poison Spring State Forest is used for demonstration of good forest management practices, timber production, recreation, water quality protection, research, and wildlife habitat. Of course, hunting is one of the major recreational activities in the forest. Each year, more than 350 camping permits are issued to visitors. Poison Springs State Forest has more than 90 primitive campsites that can be reserved at no charge for up to two weeks at a time. The property is designated as a wildlife management area by the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. Visitors must follow all Arkansas Game and Fish Commission hunting and fishing regulations. Public fishing is available at White Oak Lake, a 2,000 acre man-made lake that adjoins 
Poison Springs State Forest. Visitors will also find a horse trail and firing range. The horse trail is open June 1st to September 30th and February 1st to March 31st. The firing range is open year-round. All services are free to the public. We're going to stop in and check out the visitor center before we head to the Poison Springs WMA area to take a road tour. Guys, we're fixing to leave the White Oak Lake State Park area. We just left the little museum or the little, what would you call that, visitor center collection that they have inside there. And we're going to shoot over, I think it's 0.9 miles up here to the left. We're going to go into the Poison Springs WMA. I got the permit on my phone and signed it and everything so we're legal going in there and there's a short loop that you can make through there and while you're here at White Oak State Park like it's pretty hot right now so we're in air conditioning car and we're gonna go for a, a quick tour so I hope y'all enjoy head northwest on Campus Lane to John Schaffner Road, then you will arrive at your destination. Like Alright guys, you come to this target range, and as you can hear, there's people there now. And this is part of the Poison Springs, Arkansas Overland Route in that area, just up from White Oak State Park. This is 0.6 miles from White Oak State Park. When you leave the park, you're going to go right on this road. There's a sign. You won't miss it. And there's the fire range right there. So we're just going to cruise around. I'll grab a little bit of video here and there. Y'all have seen this before. And uh, we're going to have fun in the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. You can go to the Poison Springs WMA website to get the free permit. Uh, I opened the permit up on my phone and was able to sign it and keep a copy of it on my person. This makes it legal for you to drive around and explore this area. So be sure you check that out and get a copy before you start exploring in the Poison Springs WMA. The use of all-terrain utility tra train vehicles is allowed all year. Individuals may use their ATVs only on gravel roads, logging roads, or trails unless the roads or trails are closed by use of sign. New trails may not be created with ATVs. ATVs are not allowed on boundary lines that have been cleared by the Forest Division. No hunting is allowed from gravel roads. Hunters must be 100 feet from the center line of a gravel road to hunt. And there's a whole lot more rules about the hunters and uh, fishing part of it. You go to the website to check that out along with all the other rules and regulations for this area. Okay, you can see that I've got our Onyx map up and you can see all the blue lines that I've routed for Onyx and we're right here following the route and I'm tracking this one 
and I'll try to save as a GPX file that way if you come to Wide Oak State Park and you just want to run this little bit of route you can phone's already getting hot Let's see if I can go down one more so we're going to go up go around make a loop I will read the camping the poison spring state forest will be closed to camping from march 3rd to the 9th of 2024 which that has passed camping is by permit only permits are issued on a first come first serve basis for a two-week period beginning at 8 a.m july 15th or the first business day after if july 15th falls on the weekend visitors are encouraged to reserve in advance to ensure availability Vehicular travel is restricted to existing trails and roads. No permanent or semi-permanent structures like deer stands, lean-tos are authorized. Temporary facilities erected for the duration of the two-week permits are allowed. No tree can be severed, damaged, or destroyed. Campfires must be kept under control. Campsites must be occupied within 24 hours of the permit date. Camping debris must be removed when leaving the campsite. Violation of the following general restrictions may result in revocation of the camping permit, excessive consumption of alcohol beverages, use of illegal drugs, public endangerment with a firearm. The permit holder is subject to all applicable state and federal game and firearm laws and regulations. For more information or to reserve a campsite, call the Poison Springs State Forest Office. Also, the Arkansas Forestry Division District for Headquarters Office at 870-836-5882 or email State Forest Manager Aaron Williams at aaron.williams at agriculture.arkansas.gov agriculture.arkansas.gov the office is located at 2501 Mall Road in Northwest Camden, just off State Highway 24, one mile north of the Highway 278 and Highway 24 Junction. You can also get a Poison Springs use permit off of the website for free. As you see in front of us, the road's very sandy. There's several sections along this route that are very sandy. If it's raining, some roads can be very muddy and slick, so keep this in mind when you're planning your trip. Just southwest of my location here in the Poison Springs WMA is the beginning of the Arkansas Overland Route Trailhawk Loop. This is over 400 mile mix of dirt roads and a little bit of pavement that will take you from Falcon Bottoms WMA to the Washita River to where you will actually make a loop around part of the Washita River. There is Moro State Park and Kim and A Hot State Park. Let's not forget White Oak State Park. White Oak State Park would be the place I would choose to stay on the first part of the trail. That way you can also explore this Poison Springs WMA area. This is a camp spot that's been cleared.
going down Joey Pittman Road. Another camp spot to the left. You're going to need a good full day just to explore this area. Then you could travel on toward the Washita River. There is a dispersed campsite on the river that you could stay if you chose to. Or you could go ahead and travel to Morro Bay State Park and set up there. In between White Oak State Park and Morro Bay State Park, there are several dispersed campsites that you could stay at for free. As you watch us travel along these roads, you'll see a few primitive campsites to the left and right sides of the road. We are headed to one of my favorite campsites that I found while exploring this area. It is on the side of White Oak Lake but in the WMA part of it. It is a huge camp area with plenty of room for several people, several vehicles, including if you're pulling an overland trailer. This is the spot that I would choose to stay if I was having a meetup to uh, travel the Arkansas overland route. You would have to do the little first section of the trail to this campsite and being that this overland route is mapped on the onyx off-road app it would be very easy for anyone to get to this campsite as long as they have the app i do have a gpx file on the facebook group for the arkansas overland route trailhawk loop so if you're interested in doing this route, be sure to join the Facebook group to get files needed to make your trip easy. Also, here on our YouTube channel, you can find the playlist for the Arkansas Overland Route Trailhawk Loop. The Arkansas Overland Route consists of 27 sections. Each section has a separate video on this channel. There are a couple sections that are combined because they're so short. So there's not quite 27 videos, but the trail does consist of 27 sections. On our Facebook group page, we do have a GPX file that combines all the sections into one line so it makes it easy to follow on your car or vehicle map. There's a little trail right there you can explore. If you're using Onyx Off-Road to run the Arkansas Overland Route or explore this Poison Springs WMA area, most of the campsites are shown on the app. The big campsite that I'm taking you to now is shown on the Onyx Off-Road app. Now, I don't use Gaia, so I don't know for sure if it shows them or not, but I would assume that it also has a layer that would show these campsites. So be sure to uh, check that out as you're traveling along to help you find dispersed campsites. These sites in the Poison Springs WMA are numbered, and those numbers show up on the Onyx Off-Road app. So if you're wanting to call and make a reservation for a site, just record those numbers of the site you want. That'll help you uh, get that site. But I'm under the understanding that as long as you have this permit with you, if no one's already in the site, you can take that site and camp there. As you follow the Arkansas Overland Route, it'll take you through some other wildlife refuges. You will need permits 
to go through these areas and explore and camp, just as Poison Springs WMA. One of them is Felsenthal National Wildlife Refuge. You can also get permits on their website for this area. In some of their locations, as you enter, there's a, a barcode you can scan to get their permit. And there's also boxes that will have a paper permit. Uh, it did happen when we made the route that a couple of those boxes were empty, did not have the paper permits. And uh, you could scan the barcode, but we had our permit before we made the trip. So I was prepared for a uh, situation to where there was no access to a permit in their boxes. There is primitive camping in the Felsenthal National Wildlife Refuge. There is a lot to see in this WMA. There's also uh, some lakes, uh, Eagle Lake camping area is a primitive area. You have Prairie Island camping area. Now, when we was headed toward the Prairie Island camping area, I guess I should backtrack a little bit and let y'all know that some areas over in the Fessinal uh, WMA or National Wildlife Refuge and uh, you got the Upper Washita National Wildlife Refuge that you'll be going through some of too, which I didn't see a whole lot of camping and stuff in the, the Washita National Wildlife Refuge. But what I wanted to say is these areas, they sometimes flood them for hunters. And also, if there's a lot of rain, they can be flooded. There's areas along this route that can be flooded to the point that you can't go through them. And that's where I was talking with, just trying to get to the Prairie Island camping area. And we came across an area of road that was flooded. We went through the first flooded area and it was about middle ways of my bumper. And I want to say we went about 30, 40 feet through that flooded area. And then the road came back into view and it was a curve and as we came around the curve we saw that the rest of the road was flooded and it was flooded so far that i could not see the road anymore and the water was very deep so we had to turn around and backtrack and we didn't get to make it to prairie island camping area so when we go back which i do plan on going back soon because we're going to tr try and record more of the camping areas and more of the sites along the route uh, to share with everybody because when we made the, the route we was more concentrated on making the route recording the route and showing road conditions as i said earlier on our playlist the different videos of the sections those videos are mainly showing you the road conditions and what you'll be traveling on Now that we've turned on this road, this is the road that takes you to the big lakeside campsite. There is a uh, area that you can launch kayaks or small boat, uh, a dirt hand launch, and it's very steep getting to it. But there's a picnic table and firing. And when we get there, I'm gonna get out and we're gonna show you this area. So let's just follow this road and then you'll see what I'm talking about. For us, this is just a weekend trip and our goal was to camp at White Oak State Park. And I wanted to make a short loop route and make a GPX file. So if you come to White Oak State Park and you wanna go explore a little bit, like right now, it's the hottest part of the day, and we would have been in the pop-up camper with the air conditioner on. Uh, so jump in your vehicle, turn the AC on, find some good tunes, and jump on over 0.6 miles to Poison Springs WMA with your permit handy. And 
make this loop. This loop is already on our Arkansas Overland Route Trailhawk Loop Facebook page also. And you can find the GPX file there and follow this loop or just pull up your Onyx off-road map if you have Onyx off-road and you will see these roads already mapped out and you can kind of create your own route because you could go on it further than what we did. This is a 24 mile route that I'm showing you now. And uh, you can go past where we turned and make, up, I'd say double the amount of miles. So it's totally up to you what you want to do and how long you want to spend stopping, exploring the campsites and the streams and etc. Up ahead of us is going to be a right turn. We're going to continue straight to the big camp area along the lake. And we're going to come back and explore this road uh, after we leave the big campsite. And it does lead to another campsite that we're going to show you uh, here in a little bit. And it's also pretty decent sized and it has water access. All right, guys, this is campsite D178. This is the campsite that I would come to, one of them, if I was going to disperse camp here. You have a lake view, picnic table, plenty of parking, fire ring, and it is a designated camping area. Mushrooms. Where? He just stepped on it. There's one there, and there's one there, and there's one. They look like ears, or that one did one before it was. I run over that one. All right, guys, this is a, a really cool. Let me pan around to where we came in. We came in right here. And I'll pin this on the map. This is huge. I mean, many, many people, big, if you're pulling a trailer or whatever, you can get down here. It's just a, a really cool dispersed campsite. And this area is one of the coolest I found. I just saw a road that we haven't been down yet. It looks like it comes down to this lake too. And we'll check it out before we leave. But you could hike around in the woods there it looks like people have actually hand launched boats right here. Water's a little bit murky. You can there's people out there fishing. This is part of White Oak Lake. In fact, if you look over that way, the park is back that way. Yeah, I wonder if it's shallow right there. That's a pretty good hill to climb. Yeah, I, these shoes don't have much traction, so I didn't want to slide down the hill.
you definitely gonna want to be sure you have all your anti-bug sprays and stuff with you because in this area whoo they get bad so it looks like there might be a trail going through the woods here so i mean there's plenty to explore while you're camped out here just watch out for your normal snakes and poisonous critters Very nice campground. One of my favorites that I found so far at this Poison Springs WMA area. All right, guys, this is the second campsite on Poison Springs WMA area. Just up from the one we just, the big one we just left, this is just up and left on this little trail. And it is a designated camp spot, campsite D811. And it's pretty decent size too with lake views around, lots of trees and lake access right down there. Put a kayak or something in. It's like there's a little trail going back that way.
to have an Arkansas fishing license to come down here and fish. Here's where you put your little boat or whatever kind you have in. It would be muddy if it was rainy. Still in view of White Oak State Park over there. But yeah, another great dispersed campsite in Poison Springs WMA. Leaving the second White Oak campsite in the Poison Springs WMA. The first big one is up here and you go right. It's just around the corner from this one. So these two are together. So when you leave these areas, it looks like you pretty much have to backtrack the same way you came in before you go back to the part that you can actually make like a big circle. And you should be able to come back out the way we came in right there by White Oak State Park. We'll see when we get there. So we're going to backtrack for just a little ways till we come back to the loop part of this route. I did track coming to these campsites, so that will be in the GPX file that I put on the Facebook group, Arkansas Overland Route Trailhawk Loop. So be sure to, to look for that GPX file if you want to run this route while you're staying at White Oak State Park. But we do backtrack, and then we will turn back onto the loop part of the route. On this part of the route, the road conditions can vary depending on weather. There are some sections that get a little bit rough. As of this trip, a two-wheel drive could have made this route just fine. Depending on weather, there are times that a four-wheel drive would be highly recommended. There is one section that got a little bit rough that we did here, and we're coming up on a high wall section that I really like to stop and get pictures. So you'll see that here shortly.
So the purpose of a lot of this particular video is to show you the roads that you would travel if you take this loop through the Poison Springs WMA. Now we are coming back to the turn where we'll get back on the loop part of this route as we backtracked from those two camp areas. And we passed a few other campsites that was along this road too. So I just wanted to let everybody know when they watch this video exactly what the road conditions are like now. And you can look at them and tell that if it rains or if it's wet, that they can get to be in bad shape.
guys, this is one of the spots I like on this route in the WMA of Poison Springs. These high walls you come through. It's just a short section, but it's still pretty cool. Good place to come get a photo opportunity. Now that we've made it through this wall section of the route, it's not going to be long before we come up to a small stream crossing. And beyond that, the road's going to get a little bit rougher, and there is a few mud holes, just nothing major. Uh, one of them's a little bit deep, and I went around it, so I didn't make it any deeper. As you travel this route and these roads, for that matter, any of these uh, dirt roads, you want to do your best not to make them any worse than they are and travel lightly and respect the roads and the other people that have to travel these roads. So keep that in mind as you're planning your trips and try not to plan your trip with no good roads. As you see ahead of us, some of the tree branches are coming in closer to the center of the road. And there was one section that I did let limbs scrape going across the top of the Jeep. But uh, luckily we didn't have any scratches or anything from doing so. This section ahead of us is the section that gets a little bit rougher. Nothing to cause any kind of problems for us and the vehicle we're in. Uh, it did get a little rough and there was a little bit of mud, but like I said, it's no issues whatsoever. But if it had been raining a lot, this section might be pretty bad. This section right through here is also going uphill. It's not extremely steep, but it's still a climb.
And we're going to hit more gravel road for a while before turning to pavement. There is a short piece of pavement you have to traverse in this route, and then you'll make another ride onto uh, dirt roads. And when you make that ride, it's not going to be long traveling the dirt road that you're going to come to another area of campsites. And in this area, I can't remember, there's seven or eight campsites on each side of the road. The road in this area is very sandy. So uh, be expecting these campsites to come up. I didn't stop and get a lot of video on the campsites. We just took a few pictures. But just know there's clearings and, like I said, seven to eight campsites. This black does show air.
we've really enjoyed this part of the trail and the next part of the loop that's coming up is a lot of fun too it's about this time that i start thinking about food and even though we have the isco 60 vl dual zone in the back of the jeep grand cherokee loaded with food and drinks I'm looking forward to getting home to using our newly purchased uh, air oven instead of bringing the propane oven this time, knowing that we was going to have electricity at White Oak Lake State Park, I chose to bring this new oven. So far during our camp trip and the remaining of our camp trip, all of our cooking was done on this oven. And we've already uh, cooked, like, completely. Uh, stuffed bell peppers, pizzas, cookies, cinnamon rolls, eggs and sausage. We did eggs and bacon for breakfast on this camp trip. So uh, I've got a little section at the end of this video showing the oven we got. And uh, it has several different settings. You can air fry, you can air bake, you can air roast, you can toast. It's got a pizza setting you can dehydrate in it uh, there's just a lot of stuff you can do with this oven and if you're going somewhere with electricity and you don't want to spend a lot of time cooking and maybe you don't want to use up all your propane this is an ideal thing to have uh, for your camping cooking so be sure to get to the end of this video and check out that small section showing that oven Up ahead of us, we're going to make a quick ride, just make a circle through a campsite that's up there. And I believe there's one on the opposite side of the road, too. And while we're talking right now, something else we upgraded for this trip, and a lot of people may not really want to discuss it, but it was a porta potty. We got a new one because our old one the seal needed replaced and i found like three seals for 30 bucks and i was just thinking well if they've already wore out which we've used it several times for quite a while uh, you know i decided i wanted to upgrade so we went with a new thetford porta potty the 92306 i believe is what the number is on it and it wasn't cheap it was about around 200 dollars for this porta potty and i was going to do a, a video on it during this camp trip but i decided to, you know we just use it before we made a video and see what we thought about it and we've already used it by this time uh, a few times and it fits perfect in our camper or the uh, shower tent that we purchased which I did not get to set up at this campsite uh, there just really wasn't a good place to put it uh, the campsite was kind of small and I, I felt like we were kind of on top of each other and everybody could see what everybody was doing there wasn't a lot of privacy so we just kept the porta potty inside our pop-up which has a place for it with a curtain so everything was done there and we just used the facilities that was at the campground because those were very nice too but instead of walking to the facility at night we just used this porta potty now this thing is the throne of porta potties if you ask me i really do like this one it's modern it's comfortable it's up a little bit higher so you don't have to get down as low it has a larger toilet bowl size and it's got a battery powered flush and it's curved it's shaped like your home toilet giving you easy access to the holding tanks with an improved water tank carrying handle and a pivoting pour out spout. It's easy to empty and clean. The integrated toilet paper holder 
keeps the toilet paper conveniently affixed to the curve. Close the depart close the compartment to keep the toilet paper clean and out of sight when not in use. You easily monitor your curve with the holding tank level indicator for fresh water and waste tanks. The average is about 56 flushes per tank. And I'm not just going to go into all the details about it, but this thing is built for comfort and with an integrated toilet paper holder, the tank level indicator, the battery powered flush, mess free pour out spout. It's just a great porta potty, even though it costs about $200. If you're going to buy a porta potty to carry around with you, you just well go ahead and spend the money on this one because you're not going to regret it. Now, it does run on AA batteries for the pump, and uh, these things, if the pump batteries go bad and you don't have any spares at the time, all you got to do is fill a cup with water and use that to clean out your bowl when you flush. Another thing I really like about this porta potty, instead of that handle that you had to pull out of the front, to open it up it just has a handle on the side that very easily slides forward and backwards it's very easy to open it up the one we had with that front slide it got to where it was hard to pull that thing in and out so I'm sure that was because that rubber gasket was messed up but I just didn't feel like it should already been messed up and Thus, we upgraded. We also got a new shower tent to put this porta potty in. We do already have a review video showing this tent. This is a dual room tent, so be sure to go check that out. It's by King Camp, and it is a tent that's worthy of a throne porta potty. So, I just thought I'd touch base on that uh, a video review. On that toilet or porta potty will be coming up soon, so stay tuned for that later on. Now, let's get back to our travels.
So we made it to our stretch of pavement that we have to take. This is not going to be a real long stretch of pavement. And then we'll make a right on two gravel roads again. Be sure to uh, start watching for the campsites once we get on the gravel road. So here's our right turn onto the gravel roads. Notice the big green Poison Springs WMA signs. And it's not gonna be long now, we'll be to those campsites.
So there were some small sections along this part of the route that, if my memory serves correct, we actually made water crossings. And it looks like they have hauled in some rock and dirt and built these sections up to where it's above the flood zone. So those crossings may be gone now, and this is if my memory serves me correctly. Next level.
So at this point, we passed a few more campsites, and we're coming up in beside the gun range. If you remember when we started this route, when we turned off the main road, we started at the gun range and went past the front of it. Now we're coming up beside it, and once we get to the gun range, we'll make a left, and the main road will be right there. We'll make another left and head back to White Oak Lake State Park. So this is a new Kasari oven that we picked up. This is a uh, air oven. You can do toast, bagels, pizza, oven fry, air bake, air fry, I meant, air roast, air sous vide proof broil, uh, reheat, and dehydrate, that's dehydrate, and like this morning, I have just thrown sausage and eggs in there, and it's not splattering all over the place and making a big mess, Don't, I'm not going to have any dishes to have to clean up. I mean, we have done uh, apple, little apple pies. We've done, what else have we cooked in there? Oh, uh, 
broccoli, cream cheese, stuffed wrap things, uh, hamburgers, we did a stuffed bell peppers, and every piece, and every part of it was done in the oven. So it's quiet, it's not putting out, don't feel like it's putting out a whole lot of heat outside of the oven. And I meant to bring some meat to try to use the dehydrate feature, but I forgot. But it's cooking breakfast right now. Quick and simple. And, uh, oh, I've cooked cinnamon rolls in there too, and it did really good. So, uh, if you're camping, like we are right now in state parks, this is an awesome oven to bring camping with you. I said it's quiet, and it takes a lot of time away from you spending cooking and cleaning dishes.